This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics. After a week's delay due to two snowstorms across the state of Arkansas, the 93rd General Assembly got back to business. It was day 42 of the legislative session. There was a lot of activity in the House in particular centered around tax bills today. The full House took up a plethora of tax legislation ranging from exemptions for certain airplane sales to repealing the rental car tax, which is now obsolete. The biggest impact bill is Senate Bill 236. They are all but certain to land on the governor's desk and he has indicated he will sign them. One of the other big debates was in the state Senate, Senate Bill 6, which would restrict abortions except to save the life of the mother. It cleared the Senate easily on a 27 to 7 vote, but there was a lot of drama in the floor speeches from Republican and Democratic senators. The biggest hangup was over to include or not include exceptions for rape and incest, which the bill does not allow. You can catch our full coverage of this story at talkbusiness.net. When we return from this break, we'll play a portion of my weekend interview with State Senator Jim Hendren, who left the Republican Party and became a declared independent, plus columnist John Brummett of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette with his take on state and national politics. Stay tuned. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Capital Advisors Group and... You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but if you're looking for something more, Walmart has you covered. We provide quality care, no appointment necessary. Whether you're looking for fresh, healthy groceries to fill your prescription, get a flu shot, or pick up your next pair of glasses, we're standing by with in-store health professionals available across the country to offer patient-first, affordable care whenever you need it. Apple's optional. Well, last week, State Senator Jim Hendren of Gravit left the Republican Party and declared himself an independent. He had a lot to talk about in that decision. Let's talk about your switch from uh, you're leaving the Republican Party, you said in a very dramatic statement and video, uh, to become an independent. Tell me why. I think it's the way I can best serve Arkansas. I, I think there's the Republican Party I still love. There's great people in the party. And I know there's a lot of people working hard to right the ship. And uh, But for me, uh, I just feel like the work that I need to do in Arkansas, it's going to be easier for me to do that from uh, an independent platform, not bound to either party. You obviously have some big beefs with the direction the Republican Party has gone over the last few years, kind of maybe outline for some of our uh, viewers and listeners what some of your most problematic areas were. Well, Roby, I don't think it's been any secret that I've been frustrated with the tone of politics for some time. In fact, I'm, I think a few years ago you had me on to talk about a program I did called Shot Val, where I evaluated scorecards that are created to basically push legislators to extremes. Uh, during this last election, you know, I got involved by trying to call out some mail pieces that I thought were disingenuous, if not dishonest, again, trying to push people to extremes. And so what I've seen in both parties really is a, a, a structure that's gotten more and more extreme and left more and more people without a voice. So that's where I feel like, especially as, as I've talked to my four grown children, uh, they don't feel at home in the Republican Party like I felt at home when I was their age in the party of Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush. They don't have that sense of home because of what the party's become, primarily with its tone, with its incivility, and with what we've seen with regard to the election and, and, and all the things. Uh, I just think it's time for us to begin to build a home for people in the center who just feel left out. Uh, one of the things that you're doing with this move to uh, disavow your previous party affiliation and to assume this independent status is you formed a some sort of group called Common Ground Arkansas. Is this a not-for-profit? Is this a 501c4? What's your, what's your vision for this? 
Well, we're going to roll out the specifics of that in a couple of weeks. The, the lawyers are still working on the mechanics of it. Uh, it will have a structure similar to one of those you've mentioned. And again, depending on what the lawyers tell us we can do, we want to make sure we comply with all the laws, but we want to be effective. And, and the, the purpose of Common Ground is, again, to try to provide tools and support for candidates and for elected officials who have that desire to find common ground, to work together, to work across the aisle. Uh, I just believe that's what makes government work. And right now there is no pressure from the center. All the pressure is from the extremes. Common Ground is gonna be an organization that comes to try to encourage and support candidates who wanna work across the aisle for the good of Arkansas. So vaguely, because you are gonna roll out more details, but you, you envision something that will perhaps be a place for candidate recruitment or at least a place for candidates to congregate, uh, policy, potential money, whether that's a PAC or whatever. You, that's basically what you're envisioning. It'll be that and, and more. You know, I think the, uh, the I'll be announcing some of the people that are going to be supporting in this, and it's going to be a credible group, and it's going to be a group that understands how Arkansas politics work and has seen the same transformation that I have observed over the last 20 years and understands the need to bring some uh, civility, some professionalism, some decency back to Arkansas politics. So uh, we're working again on the structure and the details, but all those things you mentioned, and, and I think even more. So, you know, us reporters, we like to try to push things further along the, that we can. So uh, this begs the question, you have been rumored, you've even talked openly about uh, weighing a potential gubernatorial bid in 2022. Could this be the vehicle for doing this? Um, are you looking at running for governor as an independent? Uh, not right now. I, I, here's what I will say is I think it makes it pretty clear I'm not gonna run in a Republican primary since I just became an independent. Uh, but right now I've kind of pushed that decision to the back burner because before anybody can win any serious race as an independent, there has to be some sort of platform, some sort of foundation. And I'm, t and I'm telling you, there is, there is a hunger for that in Arkansas. 2020 polling shows almost as many people identify as independents as Democrats and within 10% of Republicans. And there's no place for those people to identify and to, to feel like they're at home. So we're gonna build the organization, we're gonna build the structure, uh, and then we'll worry on down the road, whether or not that is a vehicle that I or somebody else could use, not just for a gubernatorial race, but for an attorney general race or for uh, any number of statewide races, but especially for legislative races. That's where I guess I see my, uh, the, the biggest concern I have in Arkansas politics, politics right now is, is I have seen uh, the extreme almost radicalization of the legislature compared to what it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. And, you know, we don't have that. That's not that's not indicative of the Arkansas people. When you look at the governors that we've elected from Winthrop Rockefeller to Mike Beebe to Asa Hutchinson, we tend to elect centrist problem solving people. But yet our legislature is has been polarized to the point where it's not reflective of what Arkansas is. That state Senator Jim Hendren, independent of Gravit. You can catch more of our conversation at talkbusiness.net. Now, one of the inside baseball kind of interesting things about Senator Hendren's decision is he gives up his chairmanship of the powerful Senate Insurance and Commerce Committee. According to Senate rules, there have to be five Republicans on all committees. Hendren's switch to independent status leaves only four Republicans on that committee, as there are also three Democrats on that committee. So we'll be interested to see what Senate President Jimmy Hickey does in terms of finding a fifth Republican for that committee and making sure that he names a new chairperson for that committee. Be something to watch. When we come back, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette with his take on state and national politics. Stay with us. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Impact Management Group and... We have a large commitment to our solar for, for good reason. It lowers customers' rates, it's emissions free. Entergy Arkansas is the largest provider of solar in the state of Arkansas. Utility scale solar is much more economic for customers. We're gonna operate it, we're gonna maintain it, we're gonna focus on it. That's what we do for a living. We want to continue to find ways to partner with our customers to meet their renewable energy goals. Customers want this, we want to provide it. So our commitment is for the long term. Stepping into the unknown, it can be difficult to find the way. But with the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, obstacles 
become openings. As we have for more than 65 years, we'll continue to light the way, using our knowledge to create new healthcare solutions, giving you the power to shine forward to whatever awaits tomorrow. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. Welcome back to the program. Joining me now is John Brummett, columnist for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. We had a week off last week. Uh, it is always good to catch up with you after some time off. John, how are you? I'm doing well. Weathered the storm, survived the generational weather event. I see that you did too. That's good. The snowpocalypse of 2021. We'll talk about it for years, I'm sure. So I imagine, yeah. Uh, so while there was snow all over the ground, uh, there was a lot of action going on in Arkansas politics, particularly, I want to start with Senator Jim Hendren's uh, disavowing of the Republican Party moving to independent status. Tell me, do you think that what he has done is a game changer of some sorts in Arkansas politics? It's not yet. It's one guy, a prominent guy, uh, uh, saying something that had become obvious for months, if not a couple of years, which was that he was disenchanted uh, with uh, the Trumpian Republican Party and uh, had fallen out with uh, uh, the right flank uh, in the legislature, the right wing flank. And uh, when, he, when he announced his switch, it was, to those of us who keep up, probably not a great surprise. At this point, it's one guy, albeit a well-placed guy, albeit the nephew of the governor with all sorts, of, with his own personal prominence, and it's a story, and it's a good story, but a game changer means that this common ground group that he creates amounts to something. It means people join it. It means it, it, it develops a more specific uh, 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 policy identity. And then it means that he or someone like him, i.e. former House Speaker David Carter, actually mounts a race for governor as an independent or a third party and begins to show some, uh, some traction. And that could happen. It is potentially a game changer with all sorts of implications for uh, whether we can isolate the Trump cult from old style Republicans and whether such a movement could take pragmatic votes away from the already weak Democrats. So all of that is out there on a slow simmer and we're just seeing, but it is, it, it is possible. It is not yet a game changer, but it is the seed of a potential game changer. I'd be curious to see if this uh, turns into more of what we kind of saw in the 60s with Rockefeller's rise in Arkansas politics in terms of a political movement, or is this kind of a, uh, maybe a, a, a weaker attempt at the old 1990 Sheffield Nelson, Tommy Robinson kind of political dynamics there? I, don't, I think with you, uh, the, the, the final scenes aren't written on this yet. We got a long ways to go before we see if this becomes anything. Uh, true, but uh, the, what, what we've always said about uh, moderation is that is that people claim to be moderate and they claim to like the center and they complain about the extremes, but the passion at election time and the passion in donating to causes is always on the extremes and the moderates, passion and moderation is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, I see a possibility that there is so much disenchantment uh, in Arkansas uh, with uh, liberal Democrats as, an, as not a viable alternative, and generally uh, with, uh, with the insurrection element of the Republican Party. I'm just wondering if, I'm, it's early, it's, uh, but my social media feed is filled with passion for what Hendren is talking about, but that's, that's two or three days. Well, we just, but, but, but this, this will have to, what I'm saying is this will have to uh, 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 breed some passion. People have to get fired up about getting in the middle and they don't normally get fired up about getting in the middle. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. All right, yeah. Governor Asa Hutchinson's been on national television a lot lately, uh, clearly, clearly trying to raise his national profile. Um, he was an early supporter of Donald Trump. If you'll recall, he was one of the first ones in that 2016 primary to really kind of come out and embrace Trumpism. Uh, now he says it's time for Trump to, to move on. Quote, he should not define our future. 
What is ACE's angle here? First of all, is that, I mean, I don't, would dare not correct you, but I thought he was for Rubio for a while uh, before Trump. Uh, what, what are was. you defining? You're, you're okay. correct, you're correct. But he did eventually come on. You remember he spoke at the convention, was one of the first ones out there on the stage. Okay. To, yeah, I wondered when, when you, what you meant by the perspective of early, and, and uh, I get that. And in the, in the, early in the primary, he was not, but uh, he came, he adapted quickly to uh, the reality of, uh, of Trump. And now I've forgotten what your question was. <laughs> What's Ace's angle with uh, where he's positioning himself uh, in this conversation right yeah. now? And the fact that it's all, it's national. He's been on sure. a lot of the national networks. Well, in that context, I remember sitting out at the governor's mansion getting uh, uh, chewed out by him for being too partisan about uh, 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 Medicaid expansion. And I was going to cause it to not my writing was going to cause the Democrats not to work with him or something like that. But in the course of it, we started talking about the then early Republican presidential race. And he was uh, had endorsed uh, Rubio. And I said, just innocently, because I, I'm kind of a parochial, provincial guy, I said, why do you get involved in that at this point? And he said, you always want to be part of the conversation. That's what it's all. And remember, he, I mean, he's been a part of the Republican political conversation for decades at many levels, from Congress to uh, to near cabinet, unless he was actually quasi cabinet uh, and, and and deputy directors, he, he's been in the Bush administration, uh, impeachment manager against Clinton. Uh, now he's getting ready to become governor of, uh, or chairman of the National Governors Association later this year. He likes and wants to be part of the national conversation. So there's that. But I'm thinking about, and this is kind of whimsical, but kind of not. I'm thinking of, I've got it percolated in my head, a column for Wednesday that starts out, er, uh, I spent years thinking no one from Arkansas could ever become president. And now I'm thinking anyone from Arkansas could become president. Uh, I mean, you got Cotton who's running and you got to look at Asa and think, wait a minute, does he have in mind? And I'm not saying that he does. I think he may just want to be part of the conversation and take, let that take him wherever it goes. But he's not, not, he has no avenue left in Arkansas after he's term limited. He's making a, 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 a heightened uh, effort to, to, to be uh, on the national stage. The national media seems to like him because he's a Southern governor from a Trump state who's willing to, you know, be different from Trump. Uh, that... I'm just wondering if he doesn't have many options in mind, including that, you know, lightning could strike and there could, uh, there, there has to be a non-Trump uh, uh, who, who, could, who could be part of the, the mix. It might be Nikki Haley, it might be Pence, it might be any number of people who might be ahead of him. But, uh, you know, uh, who knows? But I do know, uh, I, I do know that he, that he is he thinks big. He thinks in terms of being a part of the national Republican conversation. He's long been part of that conversation. And that's what we're seeing. He also is benefiting oddly right now from his nephew bolting the party. That has made him, uh, that put him over the weekend or last week as a more premium guest to talk not only about himself and the virus and other issues, but to, what about your nephew down there? What does that mean? And what might that mean about you? And it enables him to stake out this position well, I love my nephew and I understand what he's doing and I'm saddened he feels a need to leave the party and I share many of his concerns. However, I'm going to be loyal to my party and work within the party as I always have. I think all that just puts him still, uh, uh, puts him uh, in the conversation and uh, that's where he apparently wants to be. Let's stay on the national scene here and talk about COVID relief politics. We see things kind of shaping up for the Biden administration in terms of the, the relief plan that they want to put forward is really, it looks like it's going to fall pretty much along partisan lines. Did Have we already descended into the partisan politics? And I guess maybe a bigger question is, weren't we always going to get there anyway? I think we've descended into it. I think we were always going to get there. Uh, uh, but, but, it's more com complex now. First of all, I'm not. It's still not clear the Democrats can get it done. They've only got 50 in the in the Senate, plus uh, the Vice President. Uh, that means every every Democratic senator is king. Uh, uh, and uh, Joe Manchin doesn't like the minimum wage being in there. 
uh, Senator uh, Sinema from Arizona, a sort of a maverick, moderate type. She doesn't like it. Uh, the parliamentarian may take it out. Bernie may get upset. So the, the House is going to pass it and has enough votes. The Senate probably will. But I think the minimum wage may bite the dust. And, uh, uh, and, and, and bear in mind, Biden spurned an offer, an overture from 10 center-right Republican senators who wanted to open a negotiation with him. And the Democrats at the time said, this is, this is what happens to Democratic presidents. They come in with goodwill and they want to be moderate and they want to have bipartisanship and they preach unity. And, and then they give too much right away to the Republicans. And Obama did it, they say, and Clinton did it. Don't do that, Biden. And Biden has chosen not to. If he can get this done on a partisan basis, probably without the minimum wage, then comes infrastructure. And on in, they're getting ready to go very big on infrastructure. There's this idea right now that we could just print money because the deficits, uh, deficits don't matter when you can print your own money and interest rates are nothing and the economy and, uh, uh, needs this impetus and you can score the, the effect on the deficit dynamically over a period of years based on the growth and infrastructure, just like in Arkansas, where everybody's for highways, infrastructure will bring out bipartisanship and they're gonna go big and they're gonna build a lot of bridges, gonna improve a lot of highways, railways, rail stations, airport terminals, all sorts of things. And that I think could be a big bipartisan play. So there's there's hope that you could do do it uh, uh, do the do the budget reconciliation now, and then uh, find a good uh, vehicle for some good old seldom seen bipartisanship. That's prob I think that's what they've got in mind. See, I thought you were going with bipartisanship there on the building bridges metaphor. See, and then you pivoted well, you know, and started mm -hmm. talking. You were literally if with I, me. If I had given any more preparatory thought to this, other than to try to be spontaneous in response, I would have done that. And if I, if you see that metaphor show up in a subsequent column, just understand that you get unstated credit for it. Okay. <laughs> All right, he's John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Always good to be with you. Thank All you. All right, for your man. Advice. Take care. That's all for today's program. I'm Roby Brock. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next time.